joy in the preacher not even having to ask the choir to come out because they just assume there's going to be something on the screen here in a minute. And there is. This third week of Advent can sometimes be a little difficult because like the kids, adults are ready and we're starting to get anxious and we're impatient and we're ready. And of course, everyone always asks on this third Sunday of Advent, what's up with the pink candle? Anybody know what's up with the pink candle? I would guess for as many people as are sitting here this morning, we would get that many answers about why the pink candle. There was mostly confusion at 8.30, I got to say, about the pink candle. But to be clear about the pink candle, something is clearly different. Something is different. And like I said to the kids, we are halfway between Thanksgiving and and Christmas. And so perhaps this morning does represent for us an opportunity to hit reset. A reset halfway through the holiday season to say, okay, take a breath. You got the tree up? You've, had, you've navigated maybe one holiday party? Take a breath. Something's different. Perhaps the pink candle is calling to us to pay attention in a different way. The pink candle perhaps causes us to stop and wonder, what's up with the pink candle? Something's different. Sometimes we get in a rut and we get into our routine. This tree goes here. This tree goes there. This star goes here. This ornament goes there. I'll cook this. Ryan will cook that. Mother will bring this. Aunt Sue will bring that. And we get into a routine. What's up with the pink candle? Something's different. Christmas isn't supposed to be different, it's supposed to be full of tradition. We know what's going to happen. We know which service we'll go to, except that the preacher eliminated the 11 o'clock. What shall we do? (laughs) We always go to 11. What shall we do? What's up with the pink candle? Something's different. Joy. Joy. What does that mean, anyway? Like Maya said, is it the emoji on your text message, because I don't know which one that is. There's like five little happy face emojis, and I don't know what any of them mean, and I don't know what the difference is in any of them, but maybe one is joy. Is one of them joy? Is one of them happier than other happy? Now, now I've embarrassed her. Jake makes fun of me, because I never know which one's which. Laughing tears, crying tears, there's a little bit of joy in all of that. Joy is more than one of the five happy face emojis. But I'm wondering this morning if joy is the right word when answering the question, what's up with the pink candle? Because this is no ordinary joy. And I've been thinking about these Visions out of Isaiah that we've been looking at the last three weeks. These ancient, ancient visions. And I've decided this morning for us what's all about the pink candle isn't joy, but perhaps it should be surprise. Surprise, pink candle. Not three purples, two purple and a pink. Surprise. Although it's not really a surprise, we know that the pink candle is coming. Any of us who have ever been in church on an Advent, the pink candle always comes third. No surprise. It seems each week with these texts from Isaiah that they are about God trying, though, to surprise us. 
And I don't know if us is the right word, because none of these stories, none of these visions have really been about us. Have you noticed that? Humanity is sort of secondary in these three visions. They've all been about the natural world. They've been about new and surprising relationships among creations. And humanity is sort of an also-ran. Think about it. A couple of weeks ago, we had lions and lambs. Children playing with poisonous snakes. New life out of old dead tree stumps. And this week, this week it says, the burning sand becomes a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Anybody ever spent much time in the desert? That was a real question. Let me ask it again. Anybody spent much time in the desert? I'm getting lots of no's. A few yeses. Have you seen the desert in full bloom? Have you seen the desert in full bloom? If you've not, it can be a bit of a surprise. We tend to think about desert being dry, barren places with not much life. If you've ever spent much time in the desert, you know that's not always the case. And I know I used a national park story last week. But I got to again. Because when we have these stories of the vision of Isaiah, of this perfect kingdom, time and again, Isaiah now three weeks in a row gives a story about the natural world. And let's be real, that's the national park, right? If you've ever been there, you know that. Last week, I talked about the grand old sequoias, and this week we have the funky, whatever they are, of Joshua tree. I don't really think they're trees, but they call them trees. And we were at Joshua Tree National Park, which is partly in the Mojave Desert and partly in the Sonoran Desert, depending on where you are in the elevation, and they are dramatically different deserts. And we were headed off to hike the 49 Palms Oasis Trail because the ranger thought the kids would like the dramatic turnaround point. The trail hikes you in to a lush desert oasis. And you're going out across the vast, barren desert, and they say, pack enough water. It's a long way. There's nothing out there. At least it appears to be barren. And so we took off across this desert to see this famous oasis, and we knew what was coming. And then all of a sudden, we came over the hill and around the corner and saw this. In the midst of all the brown and the dirt, we came around the corner, and there was all these trees and all this green stuff Life. Life. Water in the desert. Trees that are huge. When you get to the oasis, there really is water and lush green stuff everywhere. And you cannot help but stop and go, oh my God. Literally, oh my God. It is a surprise, even though you know it's coming. And I've been thinking about that this week, this surprise of Isaiah's vision and this surprise of this oasis out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And it feels like Christmas. You know it's coming. You're planning for it. You're preparing for it. Some of you are anxious about it, and some of you are even dreading it. I know. And sometimes I think Christmas has lost its surprise for many of us. Think about with kids, right? Presents. Is it really about the presents or is it about the surprise? Because if you've ever had little ones and you've watched them, it's like, ooh, present, and they tear it open, and they go, oh, how great, 
and then they're on to the next one. The present was great, but it seems like it was more about the surprise. And like I said, I think some of us have lost a bit of the surprise that is Christmas. And it seems that there are two kinds of surprises at Christmas time. And one is the big, magical kind that you almost know is coming, sort of like the oasis in the desert. Surprise, but not really. Oh my God, I knew it was coming. Another example might be from somebody's favorite Christmas movie where a kid gets a Red Ryder BB gun. (laughs) Surprise! Oh, thank God, I've been praying for it. Those are the big, hoped-for, not really all that surprising surprises. It seems like sometimes... The real surprises that bring the joy, the lasting memory of Christmas time are the more unexpected, the little ones who catch you off guard that you only notice if you're paying close attention. The thing we as a family actually remember from this hike is not really the oasis. It was this little green and blue, bright green, bright blue lizard. It was about yay big. And we could have missed him had we not been paying attention. Have we not noticed the life amidst all the brown, barren nothing? Just a little lizard. That's the thing we remember most from that trip. The joy happens sometimes. The lasting, memorable joy happens when we are really paying attention to the fact that Emmanuel is with us and around us in each and every moment. Each and every moment if we are paying attention. The other thing about that trip the other surprise for us, the other story, the lasting memory that we tell, again, is not about the oasis, as cool and magical as it was supposed to be, and really is. We were coming home by a different way. I know that sounds like a Magi story, home by a different way. And we were coming down out of the higher elevations of the Mojave, past the iconic Joshua trees, and down into the low desert. And we weren't expecting much. We'd seen the oasis. We'd seen the famous funky Joshua trees. And all of a sudden, everything changed. The barrenness, the brown, the nothing was gone. And the desert exploded in bright yellow. There were these bright yellow bushes all along the highway for as far as you could see. And it was again one of those, oh my God, moments. Because it was so unexpected. Because we went home by the unexpected way. Life, life in the midst of the barren places, Emmanuel shows up and surprises us. And that, my friends, is a Christmas moment. Whether it happens in May or December, that is a Christmas moment. Christmas happens whenever we realize that Emmanuel is real. And Emmanuel really is with us even in the barren places, especially in the barren places, if we're paying attention. Surprise. Emmanuel will surprise us because that really is the Christmas story, isn't it? An angel comes to Mary. Surprise. An angel comes to Joseph. 
Surprise! Shepherds just out minding their own business with their stinky sheep. Surprise! Baby. Big surprise. Magi and Herod alike both got surprise. So I'm wondering, are you open to surprise this Christmas? Is, as Isaiah says, are your eyes open? Are your ears unstopped? Are you paying attention so that God might surprise you in a real and lasting way this year? Because that's Christmas. That's Christmas. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss the joy of the next 14 days for all the busyness, all the going, all the stuff. Slow down. Slow down. So that you might be surprised. And I think that's what the pink candle is about. To make us notice a little more carefully where the light is. Let the pink candle point you toward the light of Christmas. May it be so. May it be so for us. Amen.